Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel on another live stream. The first live stream of the week straight away. I need to quickly say hi to Rain, to Matt, to Josh, to Corey. Good to see you all. And David already with a gifted membership before I've even properly start the stream. What an absolute legend. So that is greatly appreciated, my friend. I know there's not, uh, not many of us here right now. But if you are in the chat, turn the chat green to say thank you to David because that is greatly, greatly appreciated. Let's quickly change the screen over here. I'm quiet. Uh, is anyone else having that problem? Is anyone else having that problem? If not, I think we are good to go. Get in the chat, guys. Let me know how you are all doing. How are we feeling? Firstly, after the weekend, I guess. You know, we, this is the first time we've spoken since the Brentford game. It was a little bit questionable, weren't it? It wasn't the greatest watch. Let me know how you're feeling about the Manchester United latest injury news. Because that's also not Id ideal. But then also, today's conversation, the Manchester United wingers, particularly Marcus Rashford, Alejandro Garnacho, Ahmad Diallo, and also Anthony. We're going to go through a similar sort of system to what we have gone through in recent weeks with other positions to basically assess the strengths and the weaknesses of the current Manchester United forwards. We might change some of these criteria. I want your guys' input on that. But that's basically the plan for today's stream. But before we get into that, I think we do need to kind of have that bit of fallout from the Brentford game, from the weekend, from the injury news. How are we feeling about Manchester United right now? That's kind of the first thing I want to talk about before we get into this and basically just have a bit of a catch up. It does seem like the volume is fine for everyone else, by the way, Edwin, mate. So I'm not sure why it's not great on your end. Apologies for that, but hopefully it will sort itself out. Edwin, good to see you, mate. Alex as well. Alex saying he believes in the top five still. It's looking ropey at the moment. It's looking ropey. Do I still believe we can get top five? Yes. But I feel like the margin for error now is so, so small. Like, we've got to win pretty much every game, it feels now. Because the second we drop points, someone else is going to capitalise. So, uh, it's not looking great. I'm not going to go as far as saying the season is over. Because I don't think it is yet. You know, the season is just about still alive. But it's not looking good. It is not looking good. And realistically, this uh, shouldn't be the case in April. Fortunately, I think Villa will drop points. I do think Spurs will drop points. Is it going to be enough? Not sure. And also, not only will they drop enough, will we make up enough points? I don't know. I, I don't know. But I think the season is still just about alive. But Chelsea is a big game tomorrow night. Preview on that tomorrow morning. We'll be streaming and get uh, ahead of the game as well. So be here for that. But yeah. We've got to be positive. In my in my opinion, the season is just about still alive. But today, I guess we're looking a bit more beyond the end of this season towards the summer and basically what we can do with this team moving forward. Snipes, good to see you, my friend. I hope you're well. Hope you had a good weekend and are having a good week so far. Matt reckons everything is sunshine, lollipops and rainbows. Everything is wonderful. Always is as a Manchester United fan, right? How many points off Spurs are we? Does anyone know? Does anyone have the exact number? Sandra Martinez out with injury. It's not great. It's not great. It's concerning. You know, the fact that it's a different injury as well. Is that a good thing that it's a different injury? Because it means he's not picking up the same one over and over again? Or is it more of a problem because he's becoming injury prone with different injuries? Or is it bad luck? Training intensity? I don't know. I don't know what is going on with Asandro Martinez. It's really frustrating as a Manchester United fan, of course. I'm sure it's frustrating for uh, Eric Ten Hag as well. Because he's trying to build his team around someone, and he can't, because he's never available. So it's a problem. Rashford is a question mark. Uh, he's a question mark for the sake of the thumbnail, to be honest. My opinions on Marcus Rashford are quite strong, but we will cover it more in this stream today. Before we actually start breaking down these different players, what do you guys feel with this criteria? Because we've gone with something a little bit different today. Because of it being a winger, we've put less focus on the defensive side of the game. We've put more focus on the in-possession side of things. But we've also changed it a little bit so it isn't so much about first phase, second phase and things like that. It's more about different aspects of attacking play, if you like. Is that the best way to word it? So let me know your thoughts. If we beat Chelsea, we are six behind with eight games in which Spurs have a really hard running. Yeah, and Spurs can definitely drop points in that time. Will Villa as well. Fingers crossed we hope so. Alex, good to see you, my friend. Great to have you in the live stream. Hope you're having a good week, mate. Hope you had a good weekend as well. First time I've been live in a little while. So a good you... A good? I hope you're good, my friend. Hope you are well. 
yeah, the, the Spurs Villa situation, are we going to catch them? I don't know. Spurs do play all of the top three still, I believe. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I've got a feeling Villa do as well. I think Villa and Spurs might both play all of the top three, so we've got a chance. It's in our hands, I feel, because I think they will drop points. We've just got to go win a lot of games. Are we going to go win a lot of games? Not sure. Not sure. Chelsea is a big one tomorrow night, like I've said. I think that's going to be a really uh, interesting game, probably the best way to word it. Liverpool at the weekend is going to be tough because it's Liverpool. And then beyond that, who knows? But we need to just keep winning games or not even keep start winning games would be a good place to start, I guess, and just see what happens. Hi, AJ, my first live watch along. Well, welcome to the stream, my friend. Good to have you in here. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you are well. Our season is done. No top five dreams. That's how I like to hear it. Although, one thing I will say before we quickly go into this is the season physically is not over because we still have a chance of a trophy. And there's not many teams which can brag that at the moment. So it's not it's genuinely not over yet because we do have a, a cup we can go for. The league season is close to over. I think we'll know by Monday whether it's over or not. So five more days and we'll probably know where we're at in terms of the rest of the season. But to get to the point of today's stream, how do we feel about this criteria, I guess, these categories? Do we feel that they are about right what we want to look at with wingers or do you want to change it a little bit get in a chat and basically let me know because like i've said with wingers it is a little bit different we're not going to do this in the normal way so i am just interested to get your thoughts on that and also let's just do that so we get the rating system at the bottom there can i scroll up a little bit there we go alex saying it's unlikely but not unrealistic i like it i think that's pretty spot on yep i think you've got that nail on the head so, thoughts, guys. <laughs> Let's move this stream on. Thoughts on this criteria. Are we okay with this? Do we feel that this is the right way to rate the wingers? And if so, do you guys just want to get into it? I think what we're going to do is what we ended up doing last time and go through each section at a time. So rather than going through all of this, for example, like all of Rashford's things, I think we go through P1 for all of them, P2 for all of them, and go from there. I think creativity needs to capture chance creation. Yeah, we can add that in. Short creating, uh, short creating actions, things like that. Yeah, we could go to FB Ref reports as well to get some numbers behind it, but we will see. Anyway, for now, I reckon we just get into it. And then if we get anywhere and feel that we need to add something else, we'll, we'll do that as and when we get there, basically. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. So let's start off with P1. Now, again, unlike before, this isn't necessarily phase one. It's just the first side of in-possession play, basically. So for this, I've gone about the winger's ability to retain the ball. Ball retention, ball protection, which I think is an important thing, passing and also link play. So if we quickly go to a tactics board, just so I can explain what I mean by this. An example I would use of someone who is, I would say, good at this is Anthony. And I'm talking about when you, I guess it is in a way in the first phase. When we're kind of playing out, we're trying to get out from the back and you go up to Anthony here. I feel that Anthony, as an example, is a really good player at holding the ball up, getting his body between the ball and your position, protecting the ball, bringing others into play. So I think he's quite a good retention based player in that way. His passing is, and stuff could maybe be looked at. Perhaps that's where Ahmad is a little bit stronger. But that is the sort of thing that we are looking at. And then, of course, we're going back over here and actually giving them a rating. So we can either go through one by one, or you guys can literally go Rashford this number, Garnacho this number, Anthony this number, Ahmad that number. Unlikely literally equates to unrealistic. If I buy a lottery ticket and it's unlikely I'd win, so it would be unrealistic for me to prepare for winning. I see your point, but we're not preparing for United to be top five, are we? That's not what we do as football fans. So it might be unlikely, but it's not the same as unrealistic in this case scenario, right? Because it's it's different because we're not preparing as such for us to, us as fans. We don't prepare for that. So, yeah. United can still get top five, definitely. United hasn't had one easy game, do not lie. Yeah, it's a fair point. We seem to make most games look a little bit difficult. Anthony's probably better than the other three for retention. I would agree with that. I would argue 
that Anthony is the best. I don't think any of them are elite in that department. But I would say Anthony is the best. I would say... Ahmad, we probably need to see a little bit more of him. Marcus Rashford, ball protection. I think he can be a little bit easy to win off at times. Passing's a bit of a difficult one. I don't know that his safe passing is the best in the world, but I do feel that a little bit further up the pitch, he's better at passing in terms of chance creation. Alex saying Anthony is a 3, Josh saying a 3.5, and then saying uh, everyone else is a 2. We have not Ahmad. I'm not quite sure what you mean, I'm afraid, mate. Yeah, I would I would be tempted to say Anthony 3.5. I, I genuinely am impressed by him in this area. I think the improvement I would like to see him make is just actually being a little bit stronger at times. He isn't actually physically the strongest player, but I still think he uses his body pretty well to protect the ball and, and things like that. I think Ahmad is probably the next best. And then I would say the other two go a little bit lower. So I would probably go... Something like, like this, perhaps? Have I been too generous there? What would you guys make of that? This is probably what I would be leaning towards. Uh, AJ, do you think the reason for the poor performance against Brentford was due to the players being off form and tired or playing in a poor system? Mixture of everything, honestly, all of the above. I don't know that fatigue should be so much of a reason in that particular match, just because a lot of our players had actually had a bit of rest for once. So I would go more down to system and like poor form, things like that. Would P1 include beating a press? I would say so. Obviously, like I've said, the, the way in which a winger beats the press is very different to how a midfielder beats a press. Because obviously you're just in a completely different zone of the pitch. But I would still, yeah, I would include it in this, I would say still. So again, I think Anthony is good at it. I don't know that Rashford is so good at it. Anthony played for Ajax. He learned this way. Yeah, again, I think Anthony's really good at this. I think he is really good at retaining the ball. What about Forson? Would you guys like to add Forson in or not? With Forson, I might... I'm tempted to say we haven't seen enough of him at senior level. I want to say we have not seen much of Ahmad, but the little was good. Yeah, I think that's fair. And also, obviously, Ahmad, we have seen more for Sunderland as well last season. Wasn't our pressing structure, etc., the same for every game? Pretty much. Talking about Brentford here. I'm just trying to figure out why the performance was so bad for this game. Yeah, so again, I think structurally, it was largely the same problems which we've had all season. Going back some of them until, until last season, some of the structural problems. I think on top of that, for one reason or another, players individually had bad days. Garnacho was just off it, for example, when he hasn't been recently. So, yeah, I think it, the, the structure was bad. And then when the players are off form as well, that just goes horribly wrong. The structure kind of just about holds its own when the players play well. But when we've got bad structure, bad performance, it just, it just drops like we saw against Brentford, is how I see it, basically. Is how I see it. Anyway, I'm happy with those numbers. We'll move into P2 for the sake of not dwelling on it for too long. P2, we are talking about, I've called it traditional wing play. It's probably the wrong thing to call it, perhaps, but it's just what I've gone for. We are basically here talking about dribbling, one versus one ability, trickery, ball carrying, not necessarily always beating a player, but carrying into space, something which I think Garnacho is really good at. That's what we're talking about a bit more here. I think you're right, AJ. Yeah, I think it again. It was I think it was a combination of a lot of different things against Brentford, but overall, it was really bad. It was horrendous. Rashford's either a one or a five here. It depends on the day. Yeah, I think Rashford is up there when he's on his day. Like you guys are saying, there he is a four or a four point five. I think he's quality, but then on another day, he can be quite poor in this way. I think Garnacho again is good here. Anthony, I would say, is poor. Ahmad. Ahmad's a little bit of a blend in between, better than Anthony, but probably not quite as good as the others. I still think Rashford is one of the best dribblers on the planet, I do believe that. Not top five, maybe not top ten, but sort of that next bracket, I still think he's right up there when he's on his day. Again, we can throw at him though. Is he on his day regularly enough? Probably not. In terms of the ratings, I don't want to be too harsh, 
But I do feel like Anthony is a two, just because he doesn't beat his man that often. So I think he probably is just average, I think I would say. What's Alex said? Alex has said 3.5 for Garnacho, which would have him just above good. Uh, 2.5 for Anthony, Rashford a 3.5, Ahmad a 3. What do you guys feel is the difference here between Rashford and Garnacho? Are they the same? Is one of them a little bit ahead of the other? Consistency obviously comes into it as well. Interested to hear your, interested to hear your thoughts. Uh, with Ahmad, I think it's tendency more than ability. I think he could be more of a traditional take on winger if he wanted, but he tries to be more cute with it. The thing I fear with Ahmad is a little bit, a little bit like the problem we saw with Sancho at times, is that lack of ability to create proper separation from the opposition. Of course, you don't have to have pace, but a bit of having one of a bit of pace or acceleration or strength definitely helps. Definitely, definitely helps. Inconsistency is why I have them both at a 3.5. Yeah, I think that's completely fair. I'm not giving Rashford the on-his-day benefit because the fan base never did that for Pogba, when on his day he was the best in the world in his position. Well, I am going to give Rashford that on his day because I did do it with Pogba. So, yeah. But I understand some people definitely didn't. I'm feeling here... <clears throat> apologies. I'm thinking roughly, and let me know what you guys think. I'm not sure what happened to my accent there. I'm thinking we're talking Rashford 4, Garnaccio 3.5, Ahmad currently 2.5, with the ability that he could definitely turn it to a 3 quite quickly, perhaps if we saw more of him. I also feel like Garnaccio could overtake Marcus Rashford. I think Rashford's if we're talking about pure technical dribbling, you could edge it towards Garnacho, but I do think Rashford's physical traits give him that little bump. So, like Alex has said there, Garnacho perhaps better in the 1v1, which you could argue is a technical thing. Rashford may be that better ball carrying. And again, I think the, phys the physical traits of Rashford, if, when you watch Garnacho, he's good in one versus one situations. Can we get the tactical board up real quick? He's good in the one versus one situations. But the problem I have with Garnacho is the physical contact dribbles. So basically, you know, when he's going up against a fullback and that fullback leans on him more, I don't like him so much. Why is the lighting so different on this frame? I'm not sure what's going on there. Garnacho, when he gets lent on that bit, little bit of physical contact, he struggles. Whereas Rashford, we've seen, does have that upper body strength. And of course, he's, he's a little bit older, quite a bit older, actually. So that's some of it. He is more developed, which is why Garnacho could overtake Rashford. But in terms of currently, I would give it to Rashford. I think he's more of a threat. If it was on my life, you know, and I've got to pick one of them to go beat someone in a one versus one situation or a, or a carry, things like that, I think I would always side with Rashford at the moment. In 18 months' time, that could be very different. Udogi did to Garnacho what you're talking about. Yeah, Garnacho. Obviously, again, he's a really young player, so it's absolutely, it's not even a criticism of him, it's just where he is. It's just that slight rawness to his game. You can kind of disrupt him with a with a bit of physical contact, whereas I don't think Rashford you can in the same way. Like I said, if we revisit this in 18 months, Garnacho could have easily flipped that, because 18 months ago I would have had Garnacho a fair bit lower. So, again, give it a another 18 months, 24 months, he'll be there, he'll be there. So, again, it's not really a criticism. It's just that Garnacho is a young player. So, I'm, I'm quite happy with this. You have to foul Garnacho to stop him. I think a lot of players do resort to that. I do still think, though, that, again, just the physical contact is what he struggles with. But he's getting there. He's getting there. He's really exciting. He's really exciting. A confident Rashford is far better than Garnacho at it. I agree. And I could push Rashford higher. If, if he was more consistent. If Rashford was consistent, we're talking about 4.5 here. But he can't be. He can't be. Shoulder to shoulder, yet Walker walked all over Rashford. 
I get I see your point, but if we're gonna take one game scenario like uh examples. Come on. Every player has an off day. You're talking about one of the best right backs to ever play the game. It's not a it's not a crime to lose a one versus one to Kyle Walker. So it's okay, it's okay. Garnacho hasn't shown the absolute killer edge that we've seen from Rashford yet. Yeah, I would agree. I think he's shown it in slight glimpses, just not as consistently. I'd actually argue that Garnacho's dribbling is only really good in transition. He seems to struggle with one versus ones. Again, the physical contact comes into it. But like Edwick has said, remember when Ronaldo first started for United, he wasn't the strongest either, and now look at him. Yeah, and that's not to say that Garnacho is going to have the same trajectory as Ronaldo. Not the same. It's not to say, sorry, that they're in the same place now, as in Garnacho at this age compared to Ronaldo at that age. But your point is spot on. A player that young can very much learn to deal with physical contact. It probably will happen for Garnacho when it does. Oh, it's going to be good. He's going to be really good. Anyway, let's move into P3. Creative output. Probably the biggest criticism thrown at the Manchester United attack in general. That it lacks decision making. That it lacks the selflessness at times. It lacks the creative ability. It lacks the final ball, the cross into the box. Not sure how high we can go with these ratings here because I generally believe that we are quite poor in this department. And I think one thing you've got to look at which kind of highlights that is poor old Rasmus Hoyland and his lack of touches, the lack of chances created for him. Of course, that is down to tactical structure and things like that. But I also do believe that individually, we don't have a set of properly creative wingers. I think in terms of profile, Ahmad is the closest. But actually, I still think Rashford currently is still better at it. I do feel, again, that Rashford is the best in this department. Ahmad with the potential to be the best. Because you see some of Rashford's passing into the final third. It's, it's incredible. I think it's actually really underrated. I think a lot of people look at Rashford as this player who always dribbles into dead ends. I think a confident Marcus Rashford passes a lot more. I think we've seen that in the past two months compared to the season prior to that. I think we have seen a big improvement in that way, and I think we saw it last season. His passing can be really good. I can't remember what season it was. It was a few years back, where his passing to Luke Shaw down the left-hand side was brilliant. Crossing, perhaps not so much. But in general, I do think Rashford, again, is probably our best at the moment. But I'm confident that Ahmad, should he develop in the right way, he, sh he almost should overtake Rashford, because I do feel that Ahmad's profile is all about this. You know, I do feel that Ahmad's profile is all about being that smaller, diminutive, half space, drifting inside, creating chances from there. I feel like that is Ahmad's game. We just need to see him given the opportunity to do it. As Matt has said there, he did do it for Sunderland in the championship, which is very good. Like the championship is a lot tougher than what people make out. But until we see him doing it in the Premier League on a regular basis... He just hasn't had the chance to do it yet, and therefore he hasn't done it yet. So I would struggle to rate him too highly. Thoughts on Anthony and Garnacho here? I'm interested to get some opinions on those two, because those two I'm a little bit more unsure on. I think Rashford is... I don't know, I'm talking about Rashford maybe hovering around a three. I would say he is good at it. I would. He's not excellent. He's not excellent at it. He's not elite at it, which would be a four or a five, as you can see at the bottom. But I think he is good at it still. I think he is good at it still. Garnacho is a shoot first, um, pass later kind of player, to be honest. I think you could make the case for a few of our players being a little bit like that in the final third, which is why it's so frustrating at times. I think that's why the Chelsea game tomorrow is going to be interesting, because they've got a similar problem. Going to be interesting. Ahmad depends on Ten Hag giving him chances, which he's not doing. Yeah, I completely agree. Again, I think if Ahmad's given the chance... He could go up the rankings, but I do feel that whilst he hasn't had the chance, again, it's difficult. It is difficult. Do you think Ten Hag will try and mount on the right wing to rest Garnacho tomorrow? To be honest, I have no idea what we're doing tomorrow. We don't know what centre-backs we've got fit. Varane, Maguire, supposedly in training. Evans as well, but do you risk them? 
not sure. Lissandra Martinez out for a month. Lindelof out for a month. Is Casemiro ready to play? I don't know. If he is, do we want him? Not sure. Do we want McTominay? I don't know. We'll, we'll probably try to figure all that out on the stream tomorrow because not sure. Not sure. I don't really expect Garnacho to create when he gets on the ball. Seems more incidental than intentional when he does. Yeah, I think Garnacho and Rashford, they are players which, like we said already, are shoot first, create later sort of players. Their first instinct is, can I get a shot off a goal? Which, in my opinion, is the problem with our front three. Because Hoyland is a striker, not one who wants to create bags of chances. He's, a, again, a shoot first player. Rashford is a shoot first player, and so is Garnacho. That's the problem we've had for large parts of this season, I feel. Particularly if we then put someone like, have we got him up here? We haven't, but imagine this is Scott McTominay. When we then put Scott McTominay in the team as well, who is also a player who's not too interested in creating chances, but he wants to get in the box. I think it's why we've lacked creativity. Let's take Casemiro out for a second. So let's take the lineup from the Brentford game and the Liverpool game as well. If you look at that team, there's a lot of players there which want to shoot. Again, Rashford, Hoyland, Garnacho. McTominay, they are all players which, they will create chances here and there, absolutely, of course they will. But I don't know it's what they thrive upon, it's not their first thought when they get into the box. And that's the difference. Codename, good to see you mate, I hope you're well. Great to have you in the chat. Rashford can become a, pro a provider in my opinion, needs to build patterns and routines with Hoyland, I would agree. I believe, I haven't checked the statistic recently, but a few weeks ago, no player had created more chances for... Hoyland than Rashford, which is like a good a good thing. Rashford is creating chances for Hoyland. Obviously, we need to see a lot more, a lot more, but there are signs of it. Thoughts on the Bruno hate this season? A lot of it is undeserved. Bruno is the the victim, if you like, of a bad system, like quite a lot of these players are. I think Rashford is good at chance creation when he wants to. I would agree with that. But he seems to want to every five to ten games, but Garnacho is not good at it. Yeah, so what are we talking in terms of ratings? Ahmad, we can't go much higher than average at the moment. We, we simply can't because we haven't seen it. So it's difficult to rate him highly. Anthony, I don't think I've seen any thoughts on Anthony yet, and I would be interested. I think Anthony can be a good crosser. I don't know that he is, but I think he can be. Decision making of Anthony interesting at times creativity we haven't seen it in abundance let's quickly move back over here yeah i'm not convinced about anthony either i'll be honest with you mefc good to see you mate you have been gifted a membership by david by the way so welcome to the stream and enjoy your membership anthony at 10 damn that is generous generous three for rashford two for the rest rashford creativity is very one-dimensional i think it's a fair point I think I would still say Rashford is good, though. Nothing better than good. Again, remember the rating system here. Five would be elite. We're talking the top players in that position. We are talking the best creative wingers in the world. We don't have that. Not even close. Excellent is kind of that next bracket. Those very, very strong ones. They're in all the debates, but not quite there. And then good is just, you know, better than average. And I think that's what Marcus Rashford is. And I think the others for now would be average. Does Ahmad come up to 2.5? I would argue that could be the case, maybe. Can you add mount to this? Um, We won't add mount for now, but we could do that once we've gone through the rest of these, particularly if we have time. It's not a bad idea. I don't mind that at all. Don't mind that at all. Creativity is hard to do when everyone is standing still in the block. The defenders are settled and able to read every motion after that. Again, all of these players, of course, struggle because the system is poor. If Rashford was good, Rasmus would have at least average service. I feel that from Rashford, he does get that. From the rest of the team, I don't think he does. Ahmad would have been a three if he plays more, I guess. Yeah, again, to make it clear, I'm not saying Ahmad is not creative, but I can't say he is you know, elite, excellent, even good when we just haven't seen it in the Premier League. Give him, again, 18 months. If he gets given the chance in that 18 months, absolutely he could come into this. Absolutely. Creativity also includes off-the-ball runs, right? 
That's probably something I should have included in that, yeah. Like movement, if you like. I think that comes into it as well. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Take that into consideration. Haven't got the sample size for Ahmad yet. It's just difficult to push it too high. Clearly, this is a Rashford PR channel. Are you people blind? First of all, I think that's offensive to people which are blind. Um, second of all, you don't have to click on the video. It's up to you. Yeah, I would argue Rashford comes down a little because of decision making. I think Corey made the point. Maybe. But again, we're comparing this to worldwide wingers. So we're not talking about just who plays for City, who plays for Bayern. Are they better than them? We are talking about players who play in the Premier League. Compared, compared to Premier League wingers, for example, Rashford is better at creating than some of the wingers who play for Luton Town. Okay, you've got you've got to think really global here. Worldwide footballers that play in the top five European leagues. Is Rashford seen as average compared to Europe's top five leagues? I, I just don't think he is. He's better than that. Of course he is. That's what you've got to think about. We're not talking about compared to Riyad Mahrez at his best. Uh, Phil Foden. Prime Eden Hazard. You know, we're not just comparing it to literally the best of the best of the best. We are comparing it to Europe's top five leagues. Whereabouts are they? Realistically, if they're average and below in many of these, they should be gone from the club. So, I'm more than content with a three. And I think most people have agreed that it's pretty much about right. Maybe it's a 2.5, but that's where we're at. I find it hilarious that backing your own players is now considered as a bad thing. Fans. <clears throat> now, people have been led by the wrong people for a long time on the internet. That's, that's the problem with that. There are certain agendas which run about. You've got to look at these things as they are. Take away your passion for the club even at times. Just rate them as a footballer. You know, I get really frustrated by Rashford at times because he does a lot of things which are incredibly annoying. But you, if you can't see that Rashford's a good footballer, I can only help you so much. What happened to supporting your club? Exactly. Uh, Corey, I'm not quite sure. I'm not talking about top five leagues and Champions League. The only difference between them is that Rashford has more ability, so he's more successful, but most wingers make better decisions. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure of the context of your message, Corey. That's probably just me being stupid, I'll be honest there. That's probably just me being stupid. I do agree, Rashford's decision making definitely needs work. I do agree with you. Yeah, Corey, it weren't you, I was just disagreeing, disagreeing with, by the way. Anyway, let's move on to P4. Uh, Josh, you said it, not me. Um, let's move on to P4. Goal scoring output. Shot selection, which I think is a really important thing. Finishing ball striking. Oh, can you hear the dogs? Sorry, guys. <clears throat> Apologies for that. Apologies for that. Bork, bork. Um... You should add individual brilliance as well. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what category you'd put individual brilliance into. Where would you put that? Not too sure. Not too sure. Anyway, P4. Where would we be putting these players? I, I didn't say anything, man. I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. So again, we, again we're talking about... Goal scoring output, mainly here. Purely your ability to score goals. Shot selection, finishing, ball striking. Ball striking, I would say... Again, you know, apparently this is a, me just backing Rashford, but I think he's pretty good at kicking off football, in my opinion. Pretty hard. So ball striking, I would say he rates pretty well. I think his finishing is a weird one, because last season... Really impressive. Then this season, you can't really go above F3, so it's a little bit difficult to say. Garnacho's inconsistent. Anthony, inconsistent. I think something which 
annoys me with Rashford in particular is shot selection. He's really good. You know that? We've all, we've all seen it. When he runs in behind the defence and he does that finish where he opens his body up and then he slides it bottom corner, the far side. That You've all seen the finish a hundred times. He's really good at that finish. He then, for some reason, has these random moments where he just goes for pure power when it's quite clearly not the decision he should be taking. Which is, I think that's what annoys me with Rashford the most. I feel that when he's on form, and again, this is the difficult thing with Rashford. Pardon me, I apologise. On form, he's this. Out of form, he's that. And his form fluctuates. Is why it's quite difficult to rate these players on certain things. On form, his shot selection is brilliant. We saw it last season. There's a reason you get 30-odd goals in some of the you know, toughest competitions in Europe. But then at the same time, he can have other situations where it's not great. Again, obviously, we've got to combine a lot as well here. Take them all into consideration. Ball striking, real realistically, Rashford is a 5. Ball striking alone. Shot selection and finishing brings it down. I would be thinking... And again, we've got to, we're talking about wingers here. I'm not trying to compare him to Haaland. Completely different position. Okay, let's quickly do that. Quickly name me some wingers which you feel are better. This isn't rhetorical, by the way. Some wingers which perhaps you guys think are better at finishing than Marcus Rashford. We can say Premier League to start off with. I don't mind. You can go further than that as well. Mbappe would be one, absolutely. Yeah, like Vinicius Jr., Liao, are they better finishers? I think Vinicius probably is. Mbappe would definitely be one. Son, yep, fair point. Again, by the way, is it, this isn't rhetorical. This isn't me being like uh, sarcastic or anything. It's a genuine little thing I'm interested to see. Rodrigo. Rashford in his prime can be comparable to Mbappe, but his mentality is horrendous. Yeah, Vinicius, um, I wonder if we can get some stats to back this up and have a look. Because, for example, just to kind of give a bit of context to how I feel with this rating system, I would say Elite is... Yeah, Salah's a good shout. I would say Elite, we're talking the top... With wingers, I would say maybe top 10 in the world of elite. Because I think the term gets thrown around too much. Everyone goes, oh, he's an elite finisher. For me, I really reserve elite for the, the top dogs at it. Like, really the best players at it. So I would say that's perhaps the top 10 finishing wingers in the world. So I don't think Rashford is in that. So Rashford's not a five. Is he in that next bracket? Possibly. Possibly. Very, very few can hit the ball like an informed Rashford. I completely agree. Greenwood is a world-class finisher. Yeah, I think that's fair. 3.5 I'm seeing for Rashford. Yeah, I don't mind that. What would be the best website to try and look at some XG? Should we do that? Let me quickly go over here and see if I can find some stats on this. Because what we could look at is XG over and under performance. Apologies for the lag. Be good. Yep, cool. That's what I'm thinking. FB ref has XG at the top. Apologies for the lag, my friends. Yeah, I think we're going to have Rashford around a 3.5 or a 4 is where I'm going to end up rating him. I am just interested to look into this, though. Get some numbers behind it. Just realised why the lighting keeps changing. It's the brightness of the screen. Okay, so... I do have some stats. I just need to actually get them available for you guys now. One second... Bosh. Here we go. Apologies for the bit of time that took. My whole thing seems to die. 
when I try and load different pages. Anyway, so XG we got here. So this is this season, Rashford 7.1 XG, 7 goals scored, which is obviously what you'd expect him to be scoring. Can we check for a previous season? Hopefully. Do we, does anyone know Rashford's overall stats as well, his career stats, goals scored? Because I think it's important. I know goals scored is almost a lazy stat to use as such, but I think it's important. So last season, his non-penalty XG was 0 0.48. His non-penalty goals was 0 0.53 per 90. So that is a slight overperformance. How about the season before? Season before that, an overperformance in terms of finishing. 0 0.21, 0 0.29. That's interesting, by the way, because that was viewed as a bad season in terms of finishing. So last season, did he just get a lot of chances created for him? Season before that, non-penalty XG per 90, 0 0.27, yet he was scoring 0 0.34, so again, he's overperforming. Going back a year before, he underperformed in 1920, which is interesting, because again, I think you would have seen that as a, a good season for him. It's interesting to look at it like that. It is interesting. How many wingers could you name that could have an output like Rashford? I don't think there's many, which is why I'm tempted to put them at a four, but I know people are not going to like it because there's a lot of people which don't like Marcus Rashford, but I think it's where he belongs. 395 career appearances with 131 goals, so one in three, basically. Uh, realistically, there aren't many you would back to hit those numbers. I, I'm going to go four. People might not like it, but hey-ho, it's where we're at. Go Nacho! I think this is where I'd like to see Garnacho improve the most. PR spin? True, actually, yeah, that's my bad. It's because I've got a Rashford interview coming tomorrow. I haven't, by the way. I'm going to sneeze and I don't want to. I would say last season, Garnacho really performed well in this area. Like, really well. Every time Garnacho got into a 1v1 last season, I was confident he was bagging. But this season... There have been a lot of situations where he's one-on-one -on -one with a keeper. And he, he looks unconvincing in front of goal at the moment. I don't know why. That, like I said, there was a time last year where I felt that he was going to come on. He was going to score when he got into those positions. I don't feel the same now. Again, he's a, he's a young player, so it's understandable. Is he... Average? Is confidence, you reckon, with Garnacho? But do you think he's low on confidence this season? He's gone out to a good finisher. Is his shot selection good? Do you think he's his overthinking? That is a thing. I, I do believe that certain players are better when they have less time to think. Darwin Nunes at Liverpool is one. When he's finishing instinctively, he's really good. When he's got more time to think about it, he struggles. Uh, Raheem Sterling as well. Prime example of that. Scored a ridiculous amount of goals in his career. Particularly... When he doesn't have to think about it, the ball comes to him. Instinctively, you turn the ball into the net. Could Garnacho be that sort of player? Apologies if I just hit the mic. One in three isn't that great when you're a wide forward and your job is to score. Yeah, I mean, obviously you've got to consider that he's played in one of the worst Manchester United sides for 10 years. I think that's important to remember with all of these players. One in three isn't that great when you're a wide forward and your job is to score. I don't know that it's that bad, is it? If you were to offer me 60 games for United in a season and my winger got 20, I'd be over the moon. Personally, if my striker could then hit 30, I think that's, I think that's good now. I'd go Garnacho 2.5. Yeah, I'm happy with that. He's above average. But not as far as good yet. Hopefully he can improve here. Technically capable, but I want to see more of a focused application from him. I like it. Thoughts on Anthony and Ahmad? He's got over overhead kicks in his arsenal. He deserves a five. Yes, yeah, a fair point.
Yeah, Alex, I thought um, Garnacho's performance was weird the other day. I'm going to put it down mainly to fatigue because he did play with Argentina, his first ever start, so emotionally perhaps tired, but also they play in the early hours of the morning on like last Wednesday. So I'm going to put it down to that Garnacho. It, it was a weird performance from him, but again, he's a young player, just a one-off hopefully. Anthony doesn't do himself favours, but can score bangers. I think that's a fair point. And I had not enough games to really say it. Jet lag for a Garnacho, definitely fatigue. Yeah, I agree. I don't think we are comprehending that Rashford scored 30 goals last season. How many active wingers can claim to have reached that feat? I think there's two wingers in the Premier League which can hit that reliably, and they're Salah and Son. If we're taking non-penalty goals out of it, especially, or taking penalty goals and leaving us with non-penalty goals. Yeah, going up to, I'm happy with 2.5. Thoughts on Anthony and Ahmad? It can't be high, can it, bless him? I think Anthony's ball striking is particularly concerning at times. At times, he's barely kicking it. Shot selection, I would say poor, because he tends to have that one shot, which is that kind of that bending one. I'm thinking like maybe 1.5 and 2 or 2 and 2, something like that, maybe here. People saying a 2 for Anthony. Rashford only scored two penalties last year. Is that stat true? If so, then I need to say no more. What are you thinking? 2 for Ahmad as well. Maybe Garnacho goes to a 3 at that point. Now we'll leave it there for now. I've long said that if you plot Rashford's form versus our form as a club, he's rarely, if ever, lagging behind. His bad patches tend to align with us having multiple other issues around the club. I agree. I agree. You haven't got to convince me, don't you worry. You have not got to convince me. I have a concern. I do have a concern. One being that for some reason this hasn't added up the average, but that's fine. It's not really an issue. Concern here is that we would probably deem us forwards as shoot first, think later players. And on average, you know, if we average out our four wingers, they're getting 2.63, which isn't even as good as good. I'd be tempted to go Ahmad 2.5. Maybe. But either way. I'm going to go 2.5. Sorry guys, change your heart. Again, with Ahmad, some of it is... We need to see more of it. We need to see more of it. Actually, Rashford only scored one goal from a penalty last season. I didn't even realise that. Those numbers are ridiculous then. This is concerning though, right? It's the reason we've done this for different players. This is this is all really concerning because in the first phase, in terms of just simple ball retention, Anthony's good at it. The rest are below good. If we're talking one versus one, ball carrying, I would add individual brilliance into that as well. I forgot how to spell then. I would add that as well. We've got two players who are above good. Creativity, we've only got one player which we would class as good, and even then it was Rashford and we were a little bit on the fence. And then finishing, we've got one player who's excellent, the rest are below good. What's difficult is, as Hart Zapper said there, at the same time, half the players on that list are under 21, which is why it's really tough. And it's going to be tough this summer. Would you guys sign a right winger? In the summer. And I'm talking a right winger who, you know, realistically, we're looking towards a starter. Because obviously, the issue at that point is you can't play Garnacho, Rashford, and this new player. Rashford is the better footballer. But you've got to be so careful about Garnacho. One, you've got to be careful about him not wanting to leave in 18 months if he's not playing enough. Obviously, it would mean him going from being a starter this season to more rotation-based next season, which isn't obviously a step you want to take as a player. But I do feel that we have to do it. It's, it's difficult. And again, the point about them being under 21 is important because these are young players. 
so they do need time to develop. Development is a fine balance. You can't overplay them. You can't underplay them. It's really difficult. I like the idea, like MFC said there, of signing a winger who is two-footed and can play both sides. So it can be a Rashford backup or a Garnacho backup or a Garnacho replacement or a Rashford replacement. I do quite like that thought process. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You guys think I've been a bit harsh on Ahmad's finishing? Possibly. No, yeah, maybe it maybe could go higher. You're not wrong. I'd love to get Elise. He'd be great for Hoyland as well. Yeah, I, I, I'm unsure on Elise, but I certainly like his profile of player he is. We can't expect Garnacho to play 40 plus games, so need to raise the floor of the squad. Yeah, I, I think, again, that's what people forget at times. When we talk about a player being a, a bench player, that doesn't mean you sit on the bench for 60 games a season. Realistically, you still start 30 of them, particularly for wingers. Wingers, in terms of a tactical system, are the easiest to bring in and out of the side, depending who's on form. Like David has said there, with wingers, your left winger's out of form, it's quite simple just to bring in another left winger. If you look at City, for example, the amount of wingers they've got and had over the past few seasons is ridiculous. The The quality and depth was a joke. Was it last season? Was Mares still there, I believe? Or was it the season before? Anyway, Mares, Grealish, Foden's played there, Bernardo Silva's played there. You know, the, the amount of players that could play wing, but importantly, several of them were versatile, so they had that bit of depth as well. Julian Alvarez played on the wing for him as well last season. Was Mares there last season, or have I completely lost track of what time is? We need two right wingers who can each play 30 plus games. I like that. Two players both capable of starting for each position, then let them fight it out. Yeah, because even Rashford, whilst he's not great, he can play on the right-hand side as well. So having three wingers who can play either side does give us nice depth. And then you've got that younger option, you know, the likes of Ahmad, people like that. By the way, the reason I haven't got Fakundu Polistri um, was because I think he's done at this club, I'll be honest. So, yeah. At least they could even cover for Bruno. Yeah, I think that is the solution with an attacker. If we are to sign a winger this summer, I do feel that versatility is important. I think if we went out and signed purely a right winger, a right wing specialist who can't play any other position, I would be a little bit more concerned. But I think if we can sign a versatile player who can play several different roles, I think that puts us in a good place. But regardless, what you can see is once again, by the way, and again, I'm not trying to defend Ten Hag as such because he, he annoys me with a lot of what he does but this is another position we've gone through now we've done centre backs we've done central midfielders and now wingers here where we're coming to a conclusion that quite simply what we've currently got isn't good enough in terms of potential they might be in a couple of years but literally right now perhaps not good enough now has Ten Hag underperformed this season yes but perhaps at the same time our expectations were a little bit too high Maybe, maybe. We have like seven right wingers. Yeah, and somehow we managed to have none which we really feel comfortable starting moving forward. Because obviously the other thing before we move on is the balance as well. The balance as well. You cannot have a front three or it's only going to get you so far if your entire front three is all about just getting goals. There needs to be creativity there as well. Anyway, let's move on to the defensive side of the game. And I don't mind if we start with D1 or D2. I'm really tempted to put Sancho in here at the bottom and go through his game after it. We'll see if we get time. D1, D2. Rashford, Garnacho, Anthony, Amat. D1, deep defence. So this is more about tracking back, getting back and looking after your fallback. Work rate. Work rate is a little bit questionable, but, you know, moving backwards towards your own goal, doing defensive work. And then high defending is basically going the other way. Pressing high, intensity, dual winning, things like that. Pressing intelligence particularly is interesting because I'm not sure that any of our players have great intelligence with the press, but some of them do work quite hard. So, how do we feel here? This is where a certain man called Marcus Rashford is going to struggle, and you'll see that this isn't a PR channel. Where Garnacho is going to do well, where Anthony's going to do well, 
And well, I think Ahmad will do pretty well as well. I quite like Ahmad off the ball. Rashford for me is poor. Uh, deep defence. I think he's poor at it. He doesn't track back with great intensity. He doesn't protect his fullback. And he doesn't have the greatest work rate. At times, I do feel it's tactical. I do feel that he's told by his manager to stay high. The same way in which Salah is at Liverpool. If you watch Liverpool, you will see Salah's told to stay high and play in transition. We actually scored because of that against them. So sometimes it is tactical instruction, but Rashford's poor at it. Yeah, you, you could go as low as 0.5 realistically if you wanted to, but we almost don't need to. What do you reckon? I would say a 1. Maybe we go through them individually here. In terms of pressing intelligence, intensity, dual winning, again, I think he's poor. I think he's poor. I think he's poor off the ball in general. I would be tempted by a 0.5 here, I'll be honest with you. You know what? Hmm... Not sure, but I think he's poor out of possession. We'll, we'll leave it there. He's poor. Anyway, Garnacho. I like him here. I like him here. I would say his work rate is good. I would say his tracking back is good. I don't think his fullback protection is always the best in the sense of intelligence, if you like. But Garnacho works hard. He's a hard-working player. Again, I feel like he needs to be coached and refined on how to do it. But pure effort, he's decent. He can't be a 5 because he doesn't have the intelligence to go with it. I'd be tempted to say a 3, maybe. I'm interested to hear what you guys think. I'm seeing a 2 and a 2.5. Um, he is objectively not good at it. I'm assuming we're talking about Rashford here, but I also think it's quite uh, understandable. Every player will have an area of weakness, and forwards being defending isn't outrageous to me. I think you can get away with it as well, depending on the team. Again, in a better structure, you get away with it more. It's when you've, if you've got three or four players like it, way more of a problem. I think you can not carry a player, but you can get away with it a little bit. But, me, What do we reckon here, guys? Garnacho is a 3.5 or a 4. I can't go quite as high as a 4 for intelligence reasons. Intensity, work rate, things like that, ag agreed. I think he's a 3 plus, in my opinion. Is he a... Uh, Kind of a 3, a 3.5 perhaps, Garnacho. I think a 3. I'm happy with a 3. We'll put that for now. We can always change it. Yeah, Corey. Similar to what uh, Matt said. I completely agree. For D2, I don't think anyone scores above a 2.5. Um... The problem is, we've got players who do the work for it, Garnacho and Anthony. Anthony in particular, his pressing intelligence is decent if we're talking about here. But again, he has the problem, like what Garnacho has on the ball, Anthony has it off the ball, of he actually gets himself into a decent position out of possession, but then just gets beaten in the duel. We just got a new sub. I didn't see that pop up. Whoever subscribed, thank you very much. Welcome to the channel. Hope you enjoy it. He may not even be watching this. Might be on a different video. We're not consistent at pressing as a team intelligently. Yeah, I, I think our team press is horrendous. I hate it. It makes me feel sick at times. So I think, it, again, it's difficult to judge our individuals based on that. I find it difficult. I find this really difficult, and I do want some help from you guys. Again, I think Anthony, pressing intelligence, he's there. Intensity, outward possession, pressing, I think he's there. Dual winning, I don't think he is. I don't think he is. You look at some other clubs, you watch them play, and they, and they go into a high press. I'm trying to think of the best example. Hearts Afro, I do apologise. They. I'm trying to think of the best example of this. There are... Who's... Saka's a good example, but maybe not the best. There's got to be a better example. Pretty much every other club, basically. When they press, and they force a team into the corner, it's then difficult to actually get past them. You know, it's actually difficult to play around the press. Whereas our players, even when we get there, we still get beaten. So let's say, 
you know, the left back's got the ball. Someone like Garnacho can get himself into a good position. Say he's perhaps cut the passing angle here. He's also applied pressure to the ball. Hoyland's here. We're in a good position. But then actually, he's a bit too easy to beat in the duel. And I think that's particularly the case for Anthony. I think intelligence-wise, I think he's good. But then when he gets into the duels, he's not so great. How do you say duels? Am I saying that wrong? Duels. 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 Anyway. So it's difficult. I see what feels like six people press for City at times more. For United, you have two people aimlessly running at someone. Yeah, that is how it feels. Someone was mocking me on a video the other day for how I say jewels. Do I pronounce it as a J? Should, I, should it be more of a D? Anyway. I might go three for Garnacho and Anthony here. And 2.5 for pressing because it's difficult to... Difficult to give him any higher than that because of the system. And the dual, 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 dual tackling. It's difficult to say. And they're not great there. How about Ahmad? I think Ahmad's underrated. I don't know if he's the best at tracking back, but I quite like impressing. Manuel, good to see you, mate. Lovely to have you in the chat. Good to see you, my friend. Hope you've been well. Hope you're having a good week. Had a good weekend. All of that good stuff. Do let me know. How are we feeling for our good friend, Ahmad? Are you going to rate some of the wingers we're linked with? If enough people want it, basically. If enough people want it. The average for P3 should be 2.38. I'll just type that in. Why is it not doing it? We're froze. That's not ideal. What was it? 2.38. Maybe we've been harsh on these pressing numbers here. You'd certainly watch it. Okay, I might check on Discord as well if people want it. D1, Ahmad is a 2. He will do it if he's instructed. I think Championship Experience gives Ahmad a leg up here too. I think Ahmad's got a, a feistiness to his game, which isn't really that like widely known about. It's probably not the best way of wording it. But I don't feel that people realise. Actually, he's quite a, ten a tenacious player. And I, I do like that about his game. Uh, Anthony a 5 for D1. I can't go as high as a 5, I'm afraid. I could, I could go higher than a 3. Ahmed is quite good, you know. Won the ball for Rashford's goal and won it again for his own goal against Liverpool. Again, the problem for Ahmed is actually physically in the duel. He's not the strongest. But again, in terms of intensity, I think he's actually better than some of the others. He is a, he is a little terrier of a player. He does want to win the ball back. And he's happy to kind of fight. Should we go 2.5 for both? Just slightly above average, whilst we don't know perhaps enough about him. We haven't got the sample size to give him much more than that. I'm tempted to say Anthony goes higher here. I'm tempted to do that. Thoughts? Thoughts on that? What we can see, though, is average-wise... It's not looking great, is it? It does leave us once again needing to recruit in this area. How many wingers are better than Anthony at tracking back? I think that's a fair point. Anthony could go higher here. He could go higher. What would your guys' thoughts be? Could go to a four? I wouldn't mind it. He is good at tracking back. Garnacho could arguably go a little bit higher because he tracks really well. I would say Garnacho is not quite as consistent with it though. Perhaps that's where he needs to improve a little bit there. How do you guys feel with these ratings and overall? Is this about right, would you say? Or are we a mile off? What do you guys think? 
Have you seen the Melvin Bard news? Yeah, I've seen the news. To be honest, I haven't really focused on him enough as a player to be able to give too much thought or opinion on it, unfortunately. But I dare say we can watch him at some point. JS7 just subscribed to the channel. What a legend. Been good to have you on the stream today, mate. Garnacho ran up and down the pitch for 120 minutes versus Liverpool. Not sure he is as intense every game, to be honest. Yeah, I think Garnacho could definitely be higher in this. Again, I think it's that consistency. But if we do go to these average ratings at the bottom, and we assess our wingers, it's not great. And those of you, and I know several of you, this is the case, those of you which have been in the other streams as well, you've seen us do uh, centre-backs, you've seen us do central midfielders, and now this. It's concerning, it's really concerning. Alex, you just gifted uh, five memberships. What an absolute legend. I nearly said 3.5 things, I was reading the thing. Alex, thank you very much. That is greatly appreciated. So five of you guys who were not members before, your name will pop up there. Our members now, thanks to the generosity of Alex. So guys, make sure to spam some love hearts in the chat and churn the tack green. I think it's one day I'm going to know how to say it. But if you are now a member, and if you were already a member, spam some emojis in the chat. Enjoy the custom emojis. Thank you very much, Alex. That is greatly appreciated, my friend. And also, guys, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like on the stream, that would be kind of nice of you. I'd appreciate it. We're on 41 at the moment. Can you get it to 50? 50 likes? Just like a a tap's pretty easy. 50 likes. I reckon we can do it. I reckon we can do it. Um, there was one message I quickly want to read. Oh, David, I'm not going to read that comment. What's that? What, no? uh, I think you would rate Garnacho and Anthony higher for pressing if they were coached properly. Agreed. Agreed. Again, it, it's difficult to go too far when... We just don't see it because of the system, so it's difficult to rate them too highly. But I, I do understand your point. I do think they could be a lot higher. That has Rashford at 15.5 and Anthony at 16.5 overall. I mean, yeah, technically it does. I think what we can see is Rashford's just not good enough out of possession, and that's a problem. It's a real problem. Even if just one of them was higher. Like, I wouldn't mind so much if he couldn't if he didn't track back if he pressed intensity I, w I could get away with that I would like it it's the fact that he doesn't do either of them again I, I use uh, Salah as an example at Liverpool Salah doesn't track back that much so in terms of d1 here you'd have him quite low but in terms of pressing he's brilliant at it he's absolutely brilliant at it so if Rashford could improve at one of them, it would be a huge help. A huge, huge help. By the way, guys, Matt has put a link to the Discord in the chat as well. Check it out. Make sure to go check it out. Join the Discord. It's good fun. So do check it out if you get the chance. Completely free. I think his pressing is okay. It's just the system he's in. His intensity really concerns me, though. What would you rate Mbappe for both? <laughs> Interesting question. Probably similar to a one again. Because... Mbappe is also horribly lazy out of possession. But they don't have equal importance. P4 is far more important for, for a winger than D1. Yeah, I agree. I, I completely agree. Again, like I said, obviously it does technically give uh, Anthony the higher rating than Rashford. But what you've got to remember is it's a winger. It's a winger. Everyone has to pay £2.50 if they want to join a Discord. That's not true, by the way. You can join a Discord for free. Bonus content, you might need to pay. But you can join a Discord for free. They zapper. False advertising out here. Unbelievable. Trying to scam us all. Is Elisa a good presser tracking back? I need to study him a bit more there. Um, I think he's not as bad as what people make out. There are people who make out that elise has got this real lazy undertone to his game, and I don't think he has. I don't think that's the case. I think his body language exudes it a little bit, but when you actually watch him play, I don't think it's true. But he's also not an elite presser by any means. We're talking 2.5s probably-ish. 
think 2.5 is a little harsh on Rashford, to be honest, on P1. Yeah, I would argue the same, looking at it. Inflation, mate. Yeah, fair point. You can't argue with that. I, I would argue the same, uh, Manuel. I would personally go to a three. I don't know. Don't know. If Rashford had better P1 and P3, then you could carry him out of possession. I agree. But that hasn't happened this season. And that's why we are at a difficult moment with Rashford. Because in a certain way, it, on the ball, certain parts of the game, he has almost everything we need. But then there are other parts of the game, particularly out of possession, where, like you said, we are carrying him. And Mbappe, you carry him out of possession completely. Because he's elite at pretty much everything else here, it, it's okay, because you're carrying one of the best players on the planet. Rashford doesn't have that luxury due to his inconsistency. You know, I think Rashford could go up in all of these if it was a consistency thing. I feel like his ceiling, you know, on form Rashford, you can bump all of these up by... 0.5 if not more which obviously suddenly turns him into a very different player the problem is the form with Rashford the problem is the form people have done the same with Martial and made him seem lazy to be fair when he's not yes and no I think people have done the same with Martial but I also think he is quite lazy if you know like I, I get your point because of again Martial's like relaxed demeanour people do criticise him overly harshly but there are also times when he is actually just just lazy at times so it's a difficult one it's probably a bit of both people call Elise lazy because of his unbothered uncaring demeanour yeah but that doesn't mean you don't work hard again Martial picks and chooses his moments right Elise doesn't do it as much if you ask me to be honest there's very few if any elite historical wingers that would score super highly in D1 and D2 yeah very much so like not many would perform the best wingers of all time. Not many of them would be higher than a 2.5. So, Martial looks more unfazed or unbothered, I guess. Yeah, in a way. Again, I don't think Martial is as lazy as people make out, but I think he has, at times, lazy tendencies. I do think he does have that. You could even carry Rashford if there weren't issues out of possession elsewhere on the pitch. Spot on. Spot on. If the rest of the team, again, if we were structurally a lot better, but also certain individuals were better, then it would be much more acceptable to carry Rashford out of possession. But because, you know, the pressing structure as a whole is poor, because the defence dropped uh, too deep, because the midfielders, the midfield, sorry, isn't made up of ball winners, it all makes Rashford look worse. And again, I feel that so many of these players are the vi are victims of the system. Which is why, recently, I've been harsh on Ten Hag. Because I think your job as manager, yes, he's had it difficult at times, but I think your job as manager is to get the best out of your players. And I don't think he's done that this season for many of them. For many of them. Of course it's been difficult, because like we said, we've gone through the profiles of several different positions. And the profiles don't match up great. But your job as manager is to get the best out of them. It is to get the best out of them. And how many could you argue that has been the case for this season? I would argue Dallo is the only one who we've got the best out of this season. You know, Onana we haven't. We haven't seen his passing game. Luke Shaw, when he was fit, we weren't seeing it. Sandra Martinez, difficult because he's been injured. Varane, have we seen the best of Varane? Dallo, Yes. Kobe, I think he can do even better. Bruno Fernandes, he can do better. Rashford, he can do better. Hoyland, Garnacho. McTominay is one you could argue, but I think he's like a sort of a special case sort of player just because of, again, the profile of him. It's concerning. It's concerning. Rashford confuses me. As someone who is from Manchester and a lifelong United fan, the one thing I would do is work hard for the team. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I'm the same. How on earth have you got Rashford as 4 for P4? 3 for P4, 4 for P2. Is this a joke? 3 for P1. Uh, you've lost me a little bit, but maybe I'm just misreading your message. I do apologise, my friend. 
I don't think he's got the best out of anyone. Anyone perform is doing it their own off their own ability, like goal scoring for McTominay. Again, Dallo is the one I think Ten Hag has really improved and got a lot out of, particularly because he has sort of actively changed his position to more inverted at times. But yeah, outside of that, I don't know that we have got the best out of anyone, which is why I've been quite critical of him. You guys talking about Sancho. I can quickly go through this, but it will have to be very quickly. Dallow is a very technically good player, though. Yeah, absolutely. So is Sancho. But it takes a system to get the best out of him. And that's what Ten Hag has done in the case of Dallow. Not the rest of them. Oh, yeah, hang on. Let me just read this message real quick. So the guy who said, how on earth have you... He said, Rashford P1 is a 2.5. P2 is a 2.5, P3 is a 2.5, P4 is a 1. Oh, okay. Uh, this season, without doubt, can be no more than a 1. For goal scoring output, shot selection, finishing, and ball striking. Okay. Seems about right to me. Obviously, 1 for D1 and D2. Sell him. Attitude stinks. Fair enough. Um, Alex, yeah, well, I will be streaming tomorrow afternoon with a preview and then also tomorrow night before the game uh, with the lineup reaction. So, yeah, I will be doing both. I will be doing both. And I'll also be doing a video on my own tactical preview as well, if you like. You should be harsh on Ten Hag with the decision he's been making. I agree. I do agree. Anyway, I'm seeing Sancho P1 is a 4. I'm seeing P2 is a 4. P3 is a 3.5. P4 is a 3. D1, 2, D2, 2. Yeah, Sancho is another one whose defensive side lets him down a little bit. I think he would be... He's better than some of these defensively, I would say. In possession, P1, I would have, you know, Sancho at his best sort of... Probably like a 4.5 maybe here. I would be tempted to be generous and push that a little bit. Maybe a 4. P2, ball carrying, 1v1 dribbling, individual brilliance is where I think his game comes down a little bit. P3, decision making, crossing, creativity, chance creation, movement. I would bump him up again. P4, something like that. Out of possession, I would probably go mm, like that maybe for Sancho. Can we add them up if you want to do the maths? If you want to do the maths, we can. 7, 10, 14, 16. Why do we do 0.5s? It makes the maths harder. Uh, 6, 8, 10.5, 13, 5. Is my maths wrong there? Is my maths wrong? 6, 8, 10.5, 13, 5, 16. That's wrong. Shout out Anthony. <laughs> this shows, by the way, how much Anthony's defensive side of the game carries him. And why Rashford's so annoying. Because on the ball, it's night and day. On the ball, it's night and day. But... If you can't do it off the ball, then it is an important part of the game. What have, I, what have I done here for Sancho? 7, 11, 14, 16, 18.5. No way Anthony is our best winger. No, he's not our best winger. Because he's not doing great at anything here. And I think we've been a little bit generous maybe here. But the point is, again, we're talking about well-rounded profiles and things like that. With Sancho, by the way, I'm talking pr like the best Sancho we've ever seen. Not necessarily... The United Sancho, the best Sancho, the Dortmund Sancho we saw, I would put him here. Um, yeah, this is why Rashford is so fucking annoying, right? Because if he could just produce these sorts of numbers out of possession, we could add a six to his rating. That would be huge. That would be huge. You know, if we could add five overall rating to his thing, we'd be talking about 21. I think Anthony, we might have been a little bit generous here. And that might be a 3.5. What does that make the maths? Because I don't know why I just took off. 
them to take them down to a 15. Is that a little too low? AJ swore? No, I never. I like I censored myself almost. We're not measuring attitude here, are we? Yeah, of course. And you know how they fit a certain system, tactical role. But can you just imagine where we would be talking, or how we would be talking, if Rashford was a three for both of these? We'd be talking about a twenty here. It's why he annoys me so much. Because he's got the potential truly to be one of the best wingers on the planet. But he just doesn't do it. It's why he frustrates me. It's why he frustrates me. I think I'm happy with those ratings though. I would argue we've been a little bit generous here. On Garnacho, I'd be tempted to put that as a three. But I'm not too fussed. Do we do that real quick? It's a good ball carrier, good 1v1 dribbler, individual brilliance. Would I keep Sancho? Honestly, a lot of my decisions around Sancho would be based on what's his attitude like, which is something I don't have the answers to because I don't know. And whoever the manager is next season, Ten Hag or someone else, Does he fit what they want? Because we can see he is a different profile. He's not as explosive and things like that. I would maybe bring Sancho down here a little bit. Ball carrying, 1v1 dribbling, individual brilliance. I'm not so sure he's great there. I'd maybe do that. Anyway, that's all rough, isn't it? This is why certain people annoy me. Because I think Sancho is an incredible footballer. An absolutely incredible footballer. But for a couple of reasons... The system hasn't suited him. His attitude, there's been question marks over it. Again, we don't know. I'm not going into it. But there is maybe something there. It makes life tough for him. Rashford could be one of the best wingers on the planet, if you ask me. If we just bumped these to a 2.5, so he was average at it, we'd be getting a winger, which we're rating at 19. Which would be just quality. And then Garnacho, we can see the potential is there because the good thing with Garnacho is he is that he's already got this foundation of being a hard working player. If he can just improve a little bit, which he naturally will, brilliant, very young player, he'll get there. Anthony, this makes him look a pretty decent squad player, to be fair. Makes him look like a decent squad player. And Ahmad, again, a young player with lots of potential. If United wants to challenge for the Premier League, the wingers need to be hitting 20 in the totals. Rashford could do this with D1 or D2 improvement. Yeah, I would say for us to really challenge, you want probably two wingers which are like a 20 or in and around 20. It could be 19. And then the other two, the squad one's a little bit lower. Maybe a 17, for example. So Garnacho could get there. Rashford could get there with work rate out of possession. Garnacho polishes game. He could get there. Anthony, work on pretty much everything on the ball. He could get there. Ahmad, Work on it. Experience. Exposure. He could get there. So, it makes the winger situation a tricky one. Sancho, a tricky one. I'm glad it's not my job to replace him in the summer. Do you think Sancho would suit a Nagelsmann system? On the ball, yes. Off the ball, big question marks. Big question mark. Anyway, though, I think that's a pretty good place to end the stream. I think that's a pretty good place to end the stream. So, thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you to everyone who has been involved. I believe we had uh, David at the start of the stream with the gifted membership, and then we had Alex towards the end there with the five gifted membership, so that is greatly appreciated. We had a total of 48 likes. We couldn't quite hit that 50, but it seems to be a quiet moment at the moment with United. Again, it feels like we win, everyone's happy, lots of views. We draw, we play badly, everyone's miserable again. So hey-ho, that's where we're at. In terms of the content coming this week, tactical preview tomorrow, live stream tomorrow, then another live stream tomorrow to uh, react to the lineup. We've then got Friday, we will be covering the game. I'll do a video on it. And then we will stream the Liverpool preview. So kind of back-to-back -back days for that. And as always, I'm going to try and be a bit more active in the Discord as well. So get in the Discord server, which is linked uh, at the top of the chat, pinned at the top. But apart from that, we are finished for today in terms of the stream. So thank you guys very much for getting involved. Thanks for joining in. Thanks for the likes. Thanks for your thoughts. Thank you to everyone who has questioned my opinions. I do appreciate, you know, you guys going, yeah, 
Are you quite right? We need to change that a little bit. I really appreciate that honesty. So thank you guys very much for that. Thank you for your opinions in general, of course, as always. And for those of you which have been nice and polite in the chat, those of you which have um, encouraged Rashford PR, not happy with you. Um, thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the stream. I'll catch you on the Discord. Yada, 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 whatever. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys. I can't find the end button. This is embarrassing every time. But I'll see you guys in the next one.